Hello, welcome to this lesson of AC circuit analysis. Here, what we're going to do in this section is I'm going to give you a brief review of complex numbers. Um, up until this point, uh, you know, in your learning, I'm confident you've been introduced to complex numbers, imaginary numbers. I'm confident of that. But what's going to happen here in a couple sections is I'm going to introduce something called the phaser, the phaser notation. That's probably something you haven't seen until you studied circuits. It's very powerful, and it's what lets us analyze AC circuits um, in an easy way. Because as you can see, if you've got cosines running around all of your components, and, and you remember back from trigonometry how hard it is to deal with trig functions when you multiply them, like cosine times cosine, you get all these giant expressions. So what's going to end up happening in the big picture is I'm going to introduce something called the phaser pretty soon. Sounds like something out of a Star Trek, right? But it's a mathematical technique to change everything into a way that's much, much easier to handle the analysis, and then we can get all of our answers using the phaser techniques. But phasers are all about complex numbers. They're all about complex numbers. So I'm going to tell you right now, even though I'm going to give you a, a little quick review, if it's been 10 years since you've looked at a complex number, I strongly recommend that you go back to my uh, trig and pre-calculus tutor and review the, the imaginary complex numbers over there. Um, certainly trigonometry with angles and radians and imaginary and all these things are going to be, they're all kind of tied up together. So it's, if it's been a long time since you even looked at a complex number or an imaginary number, I really do suggest that you go study it a little bit. But I'm going to give you what I think you need here. Um, if you've seen it before but just don't remember too much, what I'm going to show you here should jog your memory and give you some skills. But I will say that if I get through this lesson and if you're stumped, at anything I say, if it doesn't make any sense, if you just feel like you're lost, it just means that you haven't studied complex numbers in a long time. You need to go get that background, and then everything will be much, much easier. So remember, um, back from uh, algebra or trig or whenever you finally learned about complex numbers, they introduced this thing called an imaginary number. And at the time, um, imaginary numbers, I know that when I first learned them way back when I was younger, they seem crazy, like, why do we care about imaginary numbers? They're imaginary, after all. Who cares, right? But what you're going to find is that imaginary numbers are no different than real numbers. They're mathematical constructs that we have. Uh, I mean, they're different than real numbers, of course. There's a definition. But what I'm saying is their usefulness is just as useful as a real number, is what I'm really trying to say. Uh, and so what we're going to do is exploit that here. So get it out of your head that imaginary numbers are useless because they're actually central to everything we're going to do. So just to jog your memory, the imaginary number is usually denoted i. It is denoted i. And that is the square root of negative 1. Because if you remember back to what a square root is, you can't find a real number that you can multiply together to give yourself negative 1. So when we come across square roots of negative numbers, we invent this number called i. And we say, well, we know it's not a real number, but it's there. We give it an, a, a letter called i, imaginary. And, um, you know, in high school, that's all you learn. Now we're going to learn the full power of why that's really useful. So if i is equal to square root of negative 1, then that means if you square i, then you just get negative 1 back. So sometimes you'll see i squared running around your calculations. Just know that that's equal to negative 1. All right, so we call that imaginary, the imaginary number. Now, that's called an imaginary number. We can also call something a complex number. Right, which is just simply when you have a real number added to an imaginary number. Notice that here 3, the number 3 is real. The number 4i is called imaginary. So if I don't have the 3, this is called the imaginary part. This over here is called the real part. When I have a plus sign here, I can't actually add them together. It's like in algebra, you can't add 